It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Thursday evening, September 6th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My job is to help new traders earn consistent profits using a simple and reliable trading strategy. My plan this evening is to identify the most reliable trading opportunities setting up for tomorrow's trading session. And tonight, I'm covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. Starting off this evening, crude oil is bullish after a 1-2-3 reversal. And I have my eyes on buying opportunities, and I'm waiting to test the low of a hidden channel tomorrow morning. The S&P is also bullish with a flag pattern tonight, and I'm waiting for it to combine that flag with the low of a hidden channel for some reliable opportunities. And my target on the E-mini is back to that range that we started today's session. The NASDAQ is bearish with a spike in range pattern tonight, and I have my eyes on a key support trend line to be used as resistance for reliable selling opportunities back down to retest those lows. Gold is bullish with a spike in range pattern tonight, and that tells me to look for buying opportunities using seller failures, but the recent strong move lower is telling me I need to use a slightly different strategy for tomorrow morning and we'll take a look at that in just a few moments. Wrapping up tonight on the euro, the euro is bullish with the spike and range pattern as well. And that tells me to look for buying opportunities using the two try rule below that range low. Boy, we're getting ready to wrap up what's been one of the best weeks of 2018 in our trade room tomorrow morning. We got non-farm Friday right around the corner, which means we have a lot to talk about in tonight's video newsletter. I've got a great, I got a great plan for tomorrow, right? Friday mornings, always a bit of a tricky scenario, right? And of course, some big news on the way. Before we jump in though, I got a great plan for you guys. Before we jump in, though, I need to remind you, if you're watching me tonight on YouTube, you can find a detailed description of this entire strategy written out right here on my blog in text format here at SidewaysMarkets.com. I'll leave all the links in the description of this YouTube video. Also, if you have any questions about anything covered in the video tonight, please remember to post those questions in the comment section below. And if you like what you see, please help support this channel by subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you always get notified when I post another video. Oh, and don't forget, if you really want to stay in tune with everything we do here at School of Trade, head over here to SidewaysMarkets.com in the upper left-hand corner you can join our mailing list. That's right. Again, I'll put all the links, the description of the video tonight, right upper left-hand corner on the blog. Make sure you join the mailing list, though, before you leave tonight. That way I can email you every time I publish something new. If you're on social media, stock towards Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, right? If you're on socials, I'm in the lower left-hand corner. You can follow me there. All the charts from tonight's video, how easy is that? Don't forget, I've got all the charts from tonight's video available for download. Just follow that link right below the video tonight on the blog here at Sideways Marks. And don't forget, upper right-hand corner, what are you waiting for? Grab that free pass. If you're not a member here at School of Trade, what are you waiting for? Grab that free pass in the upper right-hand corner, and I will see you in the trade room as a guest. All right, big, big day coming tomorrow. we got a, we got a finally Friday version of our trade. It's been a great week here so far. Right, let's get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, September the 7th. It is the first Friday of the month of September. First Friday of the month is always going to be non-farm Friday. And of course, that is the employment situation. Uh, this is in the big scheme of things. Uh, you've got FOMC, you've got GDP reports, right? And you've got non-farm payrolls, right? Big, big, big news. You could say this is the granddaddy, right? Or grandmommy, whatever, whatever you want to, right? Use to describe it. This is, this is, this is the big kahuna, right? This is the big news we get each month. It kicks off every month on the first Friday and uh, it, it really sets the tone, right? For the overall economy, the overall confidence, right? The rest of the month. And what that means is, is that a lot of people are going to be watching this report. And that means leading up to it, right? In other words, between now and tomorrow morning at 8.30, you've really got to be careful with price action. Now, historically, 
Price action is pretty quiet ahead of that non-farm payroll Friday news report. But I have to tell you, the last couple months, uh, we have seen some pretty good moves overnight. So I don't want to tell you that you can't trade overnight, right? Because you definitely can. Just make sure there is some, there's some personality to it. Just make sure there is some momentum to the market. And if you don't know what that means, right, that's probably a good clue. You probably shouldn't be, tra you shouldn't be trading it, right? So if you got some experience and you know what a good looking market looks like, feel free to trade this market, right, in the overnight and the pre-market. You know, but again, be aware, it may be relatively slow before that news comes out tomorrow morning. Now, let's talk about what happens after that news comes out tomorrow morning. We typically see one of two scenarios after the news comes out. It'll either move too fast or it'll move too slow when that news comes out right at 8.30. Now, why does that, why does that happen? Well, first of all, if the news comes out as expected, Remember, we had that ADP employment number, right, in that we talked about last night, right? That came out this morning at 8.15. It usually comes out on Wednesday mornings at, at 8.15. Nonetheless, though, this morning, we heard from the ADP report, right? That ADP report, no matter what the number says, I'm not going to bore you with those details because they're irrelevant. But the bottom line is, is that... Analysts know what the numbers are, right? Traders saw the number, and they know what to expect for tomorrow morning's report. If the numbers come out within expectations tomorrow morning, we typically see the market move relatively slowly, 5, 10, 15 minutes, and then we start to pick up momentum. However, knowing what the number is expected to be, courtesy of the ADP employment report this morning, if we get that number tomorrow morning and it's outside of expectations, right, it's higher or lower outside of that range of expectations, then we see traders, I don't want to say panic, but we see traders executing their alternative strategy or their alternative plan. Most of the time, right, a professional trader, when they're going to news like this, they'll have a plan for as expected, and they're already in that move, right, below expectations or above expectations, right? So a lot of traders who are planning on trading this report tomorrow, they're already in their positions right now knowing what that ADP number said this morning, right? So they've got their bets placed before the news even comes out. If the news comes out above expectations or below expectations, in other words, outside expectations, those traders have to then hurry and execute plan B or C. Right. If it comes out within expectations, then most traders are already in the move. Right. And the market won't really do much initially. So the moral of the story is the main thing I want you to keep in mind for tomorrow is, is that in the overnight session, don't force it. If it's moving, you can trade it. But if it's not moving well, I wouldn't force it. When the news comes out tomorrow, give it some time. Unless you're already in your positions when that news hits, it's either going to be too fast or too slow, and you're going to want to give it about five to ten minutes, see where the dust settles, or see when it gets a pulse, and then trade the momentum from there. Now, in addition, tomorrow morning, tomorrow is also a Friday, and so, of course, anytime we talk about a Friday, we have to talk about those prior week open high low close levels we get a bunch of those in play for tonight right they're used as support and resistance on that friday right at the end of the week we start watching those prior week levels and if you're wondering yes it does apply to prior month levels right as we go towards the end of the month the last couple days of the month we start using those prior month levels okay tomorrow morning friday morning end of the week we are going to start seeing those prior week levels come into focus and we'll use those as support and resistance it's also important, number two, that we want to go early in and early out, right? Early in, early out. Now, you know, typically you can trade all the way through 1130 Eastern time, right? Monday through Thursday. But on a Friday morning, you've really got to have a good reason to be taking new trades. You're more than welcome to hold a position into lunch, right? I'll hold a position, right, into lunch anytime. But on Friday, you really got to be careful getting into new positions, right, after 11 o'clock. You know, you're really got to have a good reason, right, to be taking on some new risk, right, after 11 o'clock.
o'clock on Friday. And the big reason for that is there's no big traders in the market anymore. There's not going to be as much liquidity. It's not going to be as reliable. So get to it early, early in, early out. Be careful in the pre-market. Again, use your best judgment. But if it's not moving very quickly, if there's not much personality, stay away. And then again, all eyes and ears are on that employment number tomorrow morning at 830 Give it five or 10 minutes after, right? It'll usually move a little bit too slow or a little bit too fast to really get a good handle on it. So give it five or 10 minutes and wait for the dust to settle. Don't forget, we'll be in our trade room every morning, eight o'clock Eastern time, right? On the dot, going through the same strategy with all of our clients. All right, let's jump in. We got a lot to cover here tonight. Got a lot of interesting charts. We get some strong trends, but a lot of ranges on the chart tonight. A lot of ranges, uh, a lot of prior week lows. You'll see those in play quite a bit here tonight as well. And again, we're expecting another great day tomorrow. Let's get the plan ready to go. First of all, crude oil here tonight is bullish with a trading range, a spike in range a hidden channel and a measured move on the chart this evening now as you can see the day started off with a trading range right the day began today pretty quiet right we talked about today was an inventory day and it's always a big question mark right as far as how much we'll actually get right on those inventory reports but the bottom line is the day started off with a range then the weekly inventory report right sent the price racing low before lunch and basically finished up the session after a one, two, three reversal back in the hands, right, of the bulls. The bulls had a nice strong run higher. They double topped at the high, at least right now. And this creates a bullish trading range. So most important thing right now is that spike and range, right? This is the most important factor right now. The bulls took control with their one, two, three reversal, right? But they haven't quite shown us that they can make another higher high. If they make another higher high, this will become a, a channel, right? But for now, it's called a range. Now, of course, that spike in range is important because it tells me to look for buying opportunities down below the low of that trading range. More specifically, it tells me to look for the one try, two try buying opportunity. Now, I can combine the low of that range with the low of this hidden channel. As you guys know, anytime we see a one, two, three reversal, I always like to incorporate the low of a hidden channel. And you can see how that lines up nicely with the low of that range. So looking good here for a bullish momentum going back up into that trading range that we began the day. And of course, again, right, it's not it's not that difficult to imagine the sellers failing below the weekly low and the momentum slingshotting right back up above the prior week low and potentially right all the way back up to that big round number at $70 a barrel right late in the day tomorrow. That's a little bit of a pipe dream right now. Right now, all we know is strength up into a pullback, double top gives me a trading range. So what's the best way to trade this right now? Best way to trade this now is to look for that buy down around levels of support. What I'll do is I'll give you guys a couple options tonight as far as what if it goes up, what if it goes down, and what if it reverses. So first of all, I'm looking for the most reliable trade below the low of that range, and that's what we call a two-try rule. I want to see us make a move lower, pull back to the moving average. The bears, in this case, will likely try to sell the moving average. That creates the two-try rule, one try, two try. Once I have those bears trading breakouts and trading pullbacks, now we know we've got them right where we want them. I'm going to Think about where, if I was a seller, where would my stop loss be? If I was a seller, my stop would be right above that high. And that is exactly where we're looking to buy for the move going back up to retest the high. So I want to see it pull back the low of this channel, the low of that range. But again, because it's a range, I'm looking for the two try rule. One try, two try, failure, right? And then back up to retest that high. Now, let's say we go higher here, right? What if I'm wrong about this little short-term range, right? What if we open up here and we see the market running higher? If we run higher, now we're going to draw a channel. 
That channel won't really change very much, though. We're still looking for that deep pullback. But now, if I can get a deep pullback after another higher high, now I can look for even more patterns. I can look for what I call a two-try failure into a bullish strength. Bullish strength then allows me to find a new minor channel, and I can buy off the low of that minor channel. So again, it's going to be a seller failure using that same two-try rule and then into a buyer pullback. And you'll notice how I draw that little mini channel there, right? Draw the channel off those new highs, right? And buy the low of that channel as we go higher. What if we go sideways here? What if we keep going sideways? You know, again, tomorrow's news. What if it goes sideways here? If it goes sideways, nothing changes. We still look for that one try, two try, and a failure going back up to retest that high, right? And again, if we do see it keep running higher, find that new channel, right? Buy that pullback. And again, we're looking to go back up to where this session began. Now, what would it take for the bears to take control? What does a bear market look like? Well, in order for us to turn bullish, because this was obviously not a bull market once the news came out, but in order for the market to turn bullish, we had to see strength. And an easy way to think about this is, is that the amount of momentum going lower we need to see about as much momentum going higher for this market to turn direction. So if we have the bulls on a one, two, three reversal, right? I need the bears to get the same thing. One, strong move down. Two, pull back to the moving average. And three, right, is that reversal. Now remember, right, when I say one, two, three reversal, there are exclamation points at the end of that statement, right? In other words, the one, two, three, it's got to be strong, right? I want that second leg lower to be really, really strong because what that will tell me is, is that the, the buyers, right, have given up on this. It's not the sellers that will be selling down here. It's the buyers who are holding on to long positions after this move higher. They're the ones that are getting out, and that's what's going to tell me the buyers have lost it. Now, I never want to chase after the market, so what I'll do is I'll find some new lows, I'll find that new channel, and I'll look to sell off the top of that channel. I never like to sell low. I always want to sell high. And when I say when I say sell high, right, I also think sell at resistance. So that's the plan for tomorrow, right? I'm looking for that one try, two try, back up. If we keep going higher, then we can look for that one try, two try, failure strength pullback series, right? That is a fantastic pattern. And of course, don't forget the one, two, three reversal one, two, three, reversal, find that new channel and sell off that high. Now, if you're here for the first time today, I just covered a lot, right, in the first 15 minutes of this video. And I want to give you the opportunity to learn all the terminology, all the patterns, and, and really get a good grip on the trading strategy that I'll be talking about every night on this newsletter. I put a lot of effort into this newsletter Monday through Thursday evening, and I know most of you guys get a lot of value from it right in return. So to give you even more, I want to give you a free trading course in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to put a link upper right-hand corner. Grab that link. I'll also link it up in the description of this video on YouTube as well. And that free trading course, not only will it give you a deep dive into this strategy so you can learn the strategy and make the most out of our time together, but it'll give you hundreds of examples of two try rules, one, two, three reversals. Trust me, by the time you finish up that free trading course, right, you could be the one teaching this class every evening. So take me up on that, right, and I'll see you on the inside of that course. In the meantime, right, let's keep going because we got some more to cover here tonight. We go from crude oil over to the E-minis, right? Here's the S&P 500 now. The S&P is bullish with a trading range, a bull flag a hidden channel, and a measured move on the chart this evening. Now, the day started with a narrow trading range before the bottom fell out and price collapsed. Day starts off inside a narrow trading range. The bottom falls out of it, right, and price collapses. But after seeing the sellers try twice, 
once, twice, right? After seeing them try to hold price below that prior week low, which we know is always a big level of support, right, or resistance, right, on the end of the week, right? We can easily see now the buyers, the sellers have failed, and the buyers have their one, two, three reversal, right? We talk about that quite a bit so far tonight. So now with the bulls back in control, we now have a bull flag. Bull flag means strong move up into a tight, narrow, narrow channel, right? You can probably see it right there on the chart. Strong move up into a tight, tight, narrow channel. Now, the best way to trade a bull flag is to get up above it and use that flag as support, right? So now with the bulls in control, we have our bull flag, right? And of course, anytime I see a market reverse, you know me, I always like to find those hidden channels. Draw the channel off the highs, that gets us started. Bring it down to those lows, right? And that lines up nicely. Now, look where that lines up now. Again, we're looking to use that prior week low as support and resistance on Friday. There's your prior week low, that support, right? We've got this trend line coming as support. This is looking like a great opportunity to be a buyer. Now, the goal here is, is to buy off the low of this channel, go back up into the original range we came from, and as you can see, a measured move target, right, waiting overhead. So I'd like to use the measured move as the target, use the range as the target, but use the prior week low, right, use the flag, and use the hidden channel as support. And again, you'll see lots of examples of flag patterns, hidden channels, right, and everything in between in that free trading course I mentioned earlier. It's linked up in the description of the video or it's in the upper right-hand corner in the information icon. Going forward, if how do we buy off this low? Well, we have a resistance trend line coming down. So ultimately, you're looking to get up and use that, right, as your, as your support. Now, this is where we look for that to try failure. See, what's happening right now is we have a bull market, right? And that bull market is now pulling back below the moving average, right? Now, when we get below the moving average in a bull market, what's going to happen? Sellers. Sellers are going to try to sell that pullback and take it lower. The problem is momentum is not on the side of the sellers. It's a bull market, right? We have no problem being a seller, but the market needs to be bearish before we get there, right? So we're all bullish right now. I don't want to take this sell, but if I see sellers trying to take this thing lower off the moving average, well, I know the odds are not very good. They're not going to be that successful, that pattern, right? The odds are that pattern fails. And if I can be a buyer off the low of a hidden channel, right, off of that prior week low, and I can buy off multiple levels of support, and I can do that with the sellers getting stopped out. And remember guys, if you're selling and you get stopped out, what happens? It's a market order long, not a limit order, right? Not a stop, it's a market order long, as in whatever the market will bear. So this becomes a great opportunity now for us to use the two try rule, use the seller failure in combination with multiple levels of support. So now as we go lower, I've got support. I've got support here, right? We got support. Think of it this way. We go down, moving average comes over, bears try to sell it. We got multiple support. We get the bears now, right? If they fail, we can buy into their failure. Now remember from here, right? That's option number one. From there, now we go out, we draw up that new channel. I don't chase after markets. You don't want to buy high because there's not enough buyers up there. Buyers will come in in droves at support levels, right? We don't want to buy at resistance. We don't want to buy high, right? So rather than chase after it, find that new channel, right? And then look to buy off of that channel. So again, we're looking for that two try failure right here, two try failure into that pullback pattern right going higher here now all right guys now again news tomorrow morning right what if we go sideways right what if we start seeing this thing go sideways tomorrow then what do we do well the bulls still have their edge so it's one try two try back up in 
right? If it goes sideways, the bulls still have their edge. Look to buy that low, right? Now, what if, what if we don't get the pattern? What if it just jumps, right? Could easily happen. What if it jumps? Well, if it just jumps higher, what I'll do is I'll try to use one of these swings, right? Find a new channel here, right? Find a new channel and buy right off that, off that channel low. Or let's say it spikes and goes, spike and channel, right? Find that new channel there, right? And buy off of that low, right? Buy off of that low, okay? So if it does go higher without us, right? We won't chase, we'll wait for the pullback and go from there. Now, how do we turn bearish? Well, at this point, with the buyers and their one, two, three reversal, you guessed it, we're gonna need to see the same thing to the downside. One, two, three reversal. We're gonna have to see a lot more strength going lower. And when I say strength, I really mean it. You're gonna to wanna to see one pullback, two, and some real strong movement lower, find that new channel, be careful selling into that low because you can see it didn't work the first or the second time today, right? And let's just sell off of resistance. That will be more to come tomorrow morning, most likely after that news comes out. So now we're ready, right? We know if price goes up, goes down, goes sideways, and even if it reverses. And don't forget, we'll be, we'll be trading this strategy tomorrow in our trade room at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Let's keep going. about some NASDAQ? NASDAQ is bearish with a spike in range pattern, a support trend line, a trading range, and that prior week low just overhead this evening. The spike in range has a bear bias to it, right? Spike in range, strong move down into a trading range. Not much of a surprise considering tomorrow's non-farm payroll report and considering the FANG stocks got quite the lick in this week, right? Not a huge surprise to see this market kind of cuddle, you know, curled up in the fetal position, right, to finish up today's session, right? I think they were, I think, I think all the, uh, all the, all the, uh, all, all the FANG buyers were, were uh, kind of, kind of saved by the bell today, right, if you will. The bottom line, though, is that spike in range has a bear bias to it. That tells me to sell above the range, right? That tells me to sell above the range. And, of course, it tells me to use that one try, two try failure. So it's the same two try rule. In this case, though, it's a bear market, right, not a bull market. So we're trying to sell up above the top of that range. But you'll notice, though, we have a support trend line that appears to be lingering here, right? Loitering on the chart this evening, right? And of course, I think that's going to be, right, an easy trend line to use for that second try sell, right? So we have this bear market into a trading range, rising support trend line. Right, we know that those we know the bears they're going to want to try to sell going back in. We've got one try, two try. Why not? Why not use that trend line as resistance, right, for that sell going back down to retest that low, right? Now it's also important to remember that the day began today inside of a range, right? Much like the S&P. But the one big difference with the S&P is the S&P showed a lot of strength going higher. We're not seeing that much uh, strength from the bulls on the NASDAQ. So the bulls don't have it yet, right? But what would the bulls need, right, for this to be a reversal? Really, all they need is one more leg. They've got a strong move up. They're pulling back to the moving average. If we were to see a real strong move higher, boy, now all of a sudden, prior week low comes into picture, trading range comes into picture, and this market could easily run right back up where it came from today. If it does run higher here, don't forget, we don't chase, right? We find that new channel, mark up that low, right? And now we've got trend line support, channel support, we could buy off the low of that, right, of that channel. So most important thing right now is the momentum is bearish. Unlike the S&P, we don't have enough momentum to the upside yet to call it a bull market. I think this trend line will be the most important clue we have right now. I'd like to get below it, use it, drop it back down into that range. Now, how about the opposite side here, right? How about the opposite side here? You know, can we do, can, can we do this? Can we go one try, two try, right? Can we... Can we buy that failure here? 
Does that work too? Not as well. Because remember, if we're buying, we're going against the market's momentum. And what often happens is, is that failure pattern is actually a trap high. And you'll see it come up and run lower, right? We talked about this last night. Um, I believe it was, was it the gold last night? It was the gold last night. We talked about this right on the, on the newsletter. So be very careful trying to buy that one try, two try failure. This is not a kind of a blanket policy, right? We're taking this with the trend. So what would a buy look like? Well, again, you know, strength, pullback, strength, the buy would look good off the low, right, of that, of that channel. What would it look like going lower? Going lower, what you really want to buy low, let me zoom a little bit closer here, right? What you really want is kind of what we saw already here, right? And that is a one try, two try, lower low, and then buy the pullback back up, right? It's a one try, two try, lower low, then buy the pullback going back up. The reason why this is a much more reliable pattern is because, first of all, that lower low, what does it do? Breakout sellers. You know, some poor, some poor sucker, right, sold that move down. You know, some, some poor trader, apparently not reading the right books, right, is, is selling that breakout. Well, look, I mean, it worked back here. It worked back here. It, but, right, but remember, breakouts historically are not going to be very reliable. So when we go lower here, right, and we see that, that, that lower low, now rookie traders, are, they're, they're trading breakouts here, right? They're going, oh, lower low, right? Lower high, lower low, must be a bear market, right? Might as well sell it. And so what happens is when we see that move going higher now, all those bears who are in off the pullback, all those bears in off the breakout, all those bears who are trying to trade this breakout, they're trapped and they've got to exit for a loss. When they exit for a loss, price starts to move, right? Once we see that momentum start to shift and we know it's not just a, just a little trap and run, right? Once we see that momentum shift now, now we can get that move and we can buy it going back up to retest the high. So that's the more reliable plan there tomorrow if you want to buy right off of, off of that low. Again, when the market's bullish, you want to buy below a, a, a range. We're not bullish right now. We're bearish. So we have to wait for that momentum to make that turn going back up to the high side for us. All right, so that's the plan there on the NASDAQ here for tomorrow. How about some gold? I got to say, gold has definitely been a weird market this week, right? We had a, uh, a really good session today on gold and trade room. But overall, though, it's been, a, it's been a pretty strange week here this week, right? We're definitely starting to see uh, some price action getting really consolidated. You know, luckily, we had this strong move up here this morning. And so we were able to pick off some of these lows right here this morning, right, for, 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 a, nice, for a nice handful of trades there. But other than that, though, it was, it was relatively inconsistent here the entire week, really. So what's the plan here on gold? Gold is bullish. Got a spike in range, right? Spike in range. Spike up into a range, right? We have a support trend line. Support trend line. Pretty obvious there, right? And most importantly, a strong bear move to finish off that session, okay? Those are the three main components in the chart tonight. First of all, spike in range, bull move into a trading range. Now, we've talked about this a few times already, right? What do we think about when it comes to a range? Breakout failures, right? Two try rule. One try, two try. We saw one, right, kind of a micro scale earlier. That was the, right, the, uh, the trade going back to those long, back to the highs this morning. Now we have a one try, two try, and we're looking for that move, right, going back up into that range, right? Anytime we see a bull market into a range, we look for that one try, sorry, one try, two try back into the range. If the market's bearish into that range, one try, two try, back down in, right? It's the opposite, right? We go. So we know we have a bear, a bull range, right? We've got one try, looking for two tries, and then again, back up into that range, okay? Now, 
the hard part is, right, the hard part is, uh, or should I say, never mind, real quick here, right, and of course, we also know because the market is bullish, right, because the market's bullish, we want to buy at some support levels, right? We got that nice support level coming off that low as well, right? So one try, two try, and then back up right in from there. The only problem we have right now is this big drop, right? The only problem we have is that big drop. The strength of this recent move tells me I need to wait for the sellers to try and fail twice before I can get confidence to ride this move higher. So I'm waiting for another attempt to fail, then I can start looking for entry patterns with a target going back up to retest that high. So let me zoom in here a little bit closer here for us. We've got our spike in range. We've got our one try, right? Now, normally, this would be enough for a two try, and we can look for that run back higher here. The problem, though, is this is almost a bear market, right? It's, 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 I, I really debated on this of, of whether or not I wanted to call it even, but I, I do think right now when you combine the fact, right, that we've got that trend line. I just I don't think the bears have enough of the edge right now. I think this thing's begging to go back up and retest the high. What I'm really looking for is I've already got the sellers have tried to sell that moving average once, and you can see what happened, right? It couldn't get away from the moving average. Heck, a couple of those candlesticks couldn't even close below the moving average. So that in my book, that's the first try. I'm gonna wait now for a second try. Because if history repeats itself, we're likely to see a lot of sellers waiting up here. You know, it's about halfway pullback, you know, give or take, right? You'll probably see a lot of bears coming in and try to sell this right back down again. So really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for one of two scenarios. Either one, we go through the high, then I can look for a new channel and I can buy that next pullback. Right. That's one option I'm looking for now. And again, this is all all this extra caution right now is because of this big drop down. Right. This big drop down. It's a spook. Right. Well, it's, it's not a spook. It's just it gives the sellers a little bit more courage to sell it as it goes higher. That's why you don't want to just buy it. Right. When this first try fails. So that's the first option. Right. Looking to buy the low of that of that channel. But let's just say, for example, what happens that I think is going to happen. I think we're going to see it go up and try one more time here, right? You'll get those, you'll get those sellers going, you know what? I'll give it one more shot, right? One more shot at the moving average to send this thing lower, right? Now, just like we had that trap that we called last night in the newsletter, remember that from last night, right? Strong move up. We said, if we can get this thing to pull back and trap low, remember that from last night's newsletter, that's the same idea here. Right. If I can get these bears to try to sell this thing back down and I can get this nice signal candle coming off that little trap low. Now we're talking right now we're talking. OK, so so two scenarios here. One scenario is they never even try. We run higher, find that new channel, bring it up off that low. And I'm trying to buy the low of that of that channel. Right. We'll use that prior swing of support. Look to buy that low. And again, the target back to retest the high, and of course that measured move target waiting overhead, right? If we get what I think's going to happen, which is we're gonna see another round of sellers up here, right? They'll try it again. Look for those buyers to come in just below that low, right? And what you're looking for is pretty much exactly what we saw, right, in the overnight after the newsletter went out last night, right? It's gonna be a trap low and literally it'll just it will jump right it'll jump you'll see it jump right off of off of that low and that will be a beautiful opportunity to go back up and retest the high now what if i'm wrong right what if the market is bearish what would it look like well if the market's bearish then this thing will push right through and we'll see some strength right if we're really bearish all these buyers who are fighting this thing, right, trying to go higher, they're going to give up. And when they give up, it'll collapse lower. Don't chase after it. Find that new channel. Mark up this area now as resistance, right? And we're looking to sell off of that level of resistance. Remember, the prior week levels can be used as support and resistance, right, at the end of the week. And if they do get that move down, well, now we've got that target down at that 1195 area, right? It becomes easy pickings. 
So again, I'm expecting a move going back to retest the high. Do they get it now or do we have to wait for that trap low? That is pretty much the only question on my mind right now. And again, tomorrow morning, I do want to caution you tomorrow, uh, gold. Uh, out of all of these markets, the one market that you really want to be careful with tomorrow around non-farm payrolls is gold, right? It is one of those markets that will whip and whip and whip, right, when that news comes out tomorrow. So give it time. And again, right, if you're looking for, you know, kind of a Sherpa, right, to walk you through non-farm payroll Friday, I'll be there leading the flock tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. All right, let's wrap it up here tonight on the euro. The euro is pretty straightforward. Euro is bull with a spike in range pattern, resistance trend line coming down overhead, reversal line, and of course prior week low on the chart this evening. The spike in range has a bull bias, right? Strong move up into that trading range, spike in range, bull bias. That tells me to look for buying opportunities. You guessed it, right? One try, two try back up, right? We've, we've talked about this quite a bit. And again, if you haven't joined that free trading class, I've got literally hundreds of examples of a two try rule along with range trades, right? In the free try in, in that free trading course, it's in the description. It's in the upper right hand corner. So grab that before we finish up here right tonight. Now there's no better place to look for some buying opportunities right than levels of support. Well, where do we have some support levels? We have that reversal line, right? Still there from last night's newsletter. We get that prior week low, right? That's of course, right? Applicable because end of the week, right? So these areas right here become a great support area, right? And that's where we look for, right? That one try, that two try, right? And back up in. Now remember, right? That's coming off the low. How do we do it through the highs here? One try, two try, back down in? Not so fast, right? Because remember, you get, right, because it's a bull market, you get stuff like this, right? See where it goes up, one try, two try, and then look, see how traps are waiting right there? You got to be careful, right, just selling a buyer failure in a bull market, right? One try, two try, back up off that low? Absolutely. In fact, one try, two try, failure, strength, pullback right back off that low right failure strength pullback pattern back off that low however one try two try i'm not in the business of selling a bull market but if it wants to collapse there for us keeping my eyes on the high of the range combining that with that swing and that channel right i'm going to look for that sell back down into that range, right? You'll notice the way I draw this, right? I want to sell it as close to the top of that range, right? Just like I did back here. You don't want to sell it in the middle, right? You want to trade the top of that range. Buy low, sell high, right? Avoid the middle. All right, guys? So that's the plan for the range. Now, how do we break out? How do we break out? A one, two, three breakout, right? It's just like a reversal, but it's a breakout. It's a variation of that one, two, three reversal. One, two, three. Okay. Now you'll notice, don't right, don't get wrapped up in big strong moves. For example, back here, right, we saw a big strong move up, but they couldn't hold the pullback to break out. Right? Big strong move up, couldn't hold the pullback to break out. Right? Big strong move down. If they can't hold that pullback, right? Guys like me and soon to be people like you, right, are going to be buying that failure going back up in, right? So it's one, two, three, right? Remember, strength as we go lower. Find that new channel, draw off that low up to that high. We find that new channel, sell off that high, and targets are down right at those prior lows. All right, guys, don't forget tomorrow morning, non-farm payroll Friday. Get there early to do your prep. Right? I will be there tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time, to do our prep. But remember, give it 5, 10 minutes after that news comes out. See where the dust settles, right? And then we're good to go. And one more thing before I let you guys go tonight. Remember, non-farm Friday, a lot of times, right, there's a lot of movement but not a lot of patterns because the news is so, right, the news is so noisy. Don't waste your bullets because the Monday following non-farm Fridays, right? It's called Reaction Monday, and that is typically where professionals make their money. 
right? Professional traders, they know better than to try to wrestle those news events. So they come back the Monday after, after they've done their analysis, and usually that Monday following is where you want to spend your bullets there, okay? So don't empty the clip tomorrow, right, if there's nothing to trade. And again, come out and see me tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time, right? I'll be your Sherpa, right? And we'll do it together tomorrow morning. Don't forget, if you want to learn more about our trading strategies, we've got a great free trial linked up right on the homepage here at School of Trade. I'll link it up in the description of the video. We've got beginner intermediate and advanced classes here at SOT. That way everybody has a place to call home. And if you're looking for a great trade room with a simple trading strategy, reliable trading strategy, and a great community to get involved with, our advanced classes are top notch. Any questions, hit me up on live support on the right side of the website. Call me toll free any time of the day. I look forward to seeing you and speaking with you here right in the office here in Los Angeles. Guys, great job this week. One of the best weeks of the year. Not a surprise. We're back to the fall season. We'll get one more day, though, to finish up for tomorrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in the trade room. If not, come back and see me not tomorrow afternoon, but next Monday afternoon for our next edition of our nightly newsletter. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.